Pain over the lateral hip is common, particularly amongst distance runners and women over the age of 40. There was a time when lateral hip pain was thought to be due to trochanteric bursitis only. However, over time with research, clinical experience and the advances in technology, we understand that tendinopathy, a problem with the tendons of the gluteus medius and or minimus, can also cause lateral hip pain and potentially coexist with a bursa pathology. Therefore, due to the constant changing landscape of healthcare, the term greater trochanter pain syndrome, or GTPS as we'll call it, is now used instead of trochanteric bursitis to describe this condition. The anatomy of the greater trochanter and its associated tendons and bursae is shown in the diagram on screen now, hopefully. <laughs> there are two bursae around the greater trochanter, the gluteus medius bursa lies beneath the tendon of the gluteus medius and medial to the greater trochanter. The trochanteric bursa is lateral to the greater trochanter, more superficial. Gluteus medius tendinopathy can be triggered by falls, it could be uh, with prolonged weight bearing on one uh, leg for long periods for example. So as we said before, our most at-risk populations for greater trochanteric pain syndrome, or GTPS, are novice runners whose gluteal muscles are just not accustomed to that level of load yet. And we'll talk more about load as it's vital when we're treating and managing this condition. Patients report pain over the greater trochanter, which may extend into the lateral thigh and even into the lateral leg as a whole. The pain tends to be fairly episodic, but it worsens over time. Frequently, pain laying on the affected side at night also causes problems, um, and also having pain during or after weight-bearing activities is very, very common. But as with other tendon problems, it's the cumulative load over the previous three days that we need to uh, really find out from the patient in order to try and identify the main aggravating activities and situations that make the condition worse. In a client with GTPS, palpation of the greater trochanter produces the jump sign, and it's usually pretty sore when you push over that area. Active hip range of motion tests for flexion, adduction, abduction, internal and external rotation in both zero and 90 degrees of flexion of the hip are usually normal or slightly increased, although muscle spasm may affect these findings. The Faber test is frequently positive, causing pain and discomfort, while a Bear's test may not be positive. We check hip movement passively as it helps us to assess for the presence of femoroacetabular joint pain, which is your hip, ball and socket pain. Problems such as osteoarthritis can cause this. Resisted external rotation and abduction muscle tests can test for muscle weaknesses. And any obvious differences between the painful and non-painful side can potentially help with forming a diagnosis and give some clues as to what we should be targeting during treatment uh, or the rehabilitation phase. Step up and step down test may help differentiate between tendinopathy, tears and hip osteoarthritis. Those with more severe GTPS reports high levels of pain with stepping up forwards onto a step and down sideways off of a step. Those with less severe presentation have pain with a hip hitch with external and or internal rotation. Reports of groin pain with these activities is likely if the person has some sort of hip joint pathology, the most common of which is an osteoarthritic change within the joint. And this will be in addition to any lateral hip pain. A Trendelenburg gait and weakness may also be present. And this is an inhibition or weakness of the gluteus medius and or minimus muscles. Differentiating between pain inhibition and true weakness is very important. The symptoms specifically affect runners, possibly due to the tilting of the pelvis when they're running. 
Diagnostic ultrasound can be performed to determine if there's any fluid present within the bursa or thickening exists around the bursa. And also we can look for any echogenic changes or so any appearance changes in the tendon which would be consistent with any tendinopathy or tears. MRI can also show tendinopathy and tears of the gluteus muscles. The principles of treating GTPS are similar to treatment of other tendinopathy such as we want to control the pain by minimizing the compression on the greater trochanter and uh, managing the load on the tendons. Secondly, we want to strengthen and improve function of the gluteal muscles. And third, treat any comorbidities, which we'll explain in a moment. It's all about keeping the load to a level where the injured tissues are not further aggravated whilst aiming to strengthen the tendons and muscles in order to make them better prepared to handle the daily loads that we place upon them in our daily activities. For example, walking places approximately 1 to 1.5 times body weight through the gluteal muscles in every stride. The faster we run, the more force the muscles generate and therefore the higher the load becomes. It can be all the way up to and above six times body weight in some people. Therefore, we can manipulate the load by either changing the duration of the activity. So this is the length of time or the distance we, we run. We could also change the intensity of the activity, so how fast we run, or the frequency of the activity, how many times a week we were to do the exercise or the run. In the acute phase, treatment of GTPS consists of relative rest, ice, TFL and ITB uh, massage work in order to help soft tissue compliance. Taping could be used to reduce the stress on those irritated tendons and exercises to improve gluteal muscle control. And we could also use some anti-inflammatories and paracetamol if appropriate for the individual. Now, I'm not a huge fan of using medication as it makes it difficult to gauge how your body has reacted to the load that you've just put your body through. For example, you might have just walked five kilometers and your hip feels absolutely fine. But later when the effect of the painkillers wear off, it's very, very sore again. Have the painkillers been useful in this case or have they actually set us back? Clients or patients should be checked for hip abduction and rotation control uh, in activities of daily living, such as getting out of a chair, climbing stairs, and standing. If gluteal muscles don't function correctly, the knee tends to travel across the body, putting more compression on the structures of the lateral hip, increasing the risk of developing GTPS. As the patient improves, we can increase the load and bring in more sport specific activities such as running, jumping, hopping, making sure that we analyze each of those movements to make sure the technique is correct, just like we did with the exercise at the lower level. Runners should avoid uh, curved tracks or roads with excessive camber when they reduce their running program as this can cause disproportionate load from one side to the other. Shockwave therapy has also been shown to be effective in treatment of GTPS. Stubborn cases may respond to a local corticosteroid injection. Ultrasound guided corticosteroid injections have been shown to be an effective treatment for gluteus medius tendinopathy. The research findings do differ between 50 to 72% of individuals having at least a 30% improvement in their pain after a three month period, so a little bit mixed. But it's essential that a corticosteroid injection is only regarded as one part of the treatment. It's not the whole thing. Because what we're looking to do is reduce pain enough to enable the patient to commence some sort of muscle strengthening and rehabilitation program, which completely is underpinning and key to this whole process. The following exercises are designed to improve the function and strength of the gluteal muscles in people with GTPS. And it can be very helpful to include lumbar pelvic control work at the same time, which we will add into this. Hip adduction may be associated with increased pain and hence those sort of exercises like clams in a position where the leg is 
allowed to rest completely on the other knee, that should be avoided. We'll modify that a little bit to reduce the adduction. With people laying on their front and the legs slightly abducted, the knee is flexed 90 degrees and the patient's instructed to medially and laterally rotate the hip within their pain limits. By gaining excellent control of this movement through this range, including both external and internal rotation, it gives good concentric and eccentric activity to the gluteus medius and minimus muscles in a relatively unloaded situation. And we should also try and do this exercise in differing levels of hip flexion. So putting a pillow or a bolster underneath the hip can just make that a little bit more flexed and it will influence different fibers within those muscles. We can make it a bit more difficult as well by adding some ankle weights once you start to get really good, but make sure that we don't overdo it and use your body's response after the exercise as your guide whether you're getting the load correct or whether you're overdoing it or underdoing it. Hip abduction strengthening should be avoided, uh, certainly in the initial stages of GTPS, because it can provoke symptoms. Hip abduction should only be started when the patient has good control of the deep hip stabilizers, and it should only start in positions of relative hip abduction initially, so that there's not that adduction compression on that lateral hip. You could use a swimming pool or hydrotherapy center to aid this if need be to reduce the load. Rubber band type exercises like resistance bands, these exercises need to be introduced very carefully and the response must be monitored carefully to look for any changes in symptoms. Slide boards have also been used in the past as well. Hip related comorbidities such as osteoarthritis or labral tears frequently coexist with GTPS and they should be diagnosed and addressed. Furthermore, referred pain from the spine should be assessed and treated when it's appropriate. If you have GTPS, we'd really like to hear from you, so please put your story in the comments below. If you have any ideas about future content, please again, comment below for that. And do like the video if you did like it and subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.